how to add data and labels on top of a bar chart in Chart.js. So this is one of the viewer's question. And in this viewer, basically the viewer was watching one of my videos here, which was about uh, how to add data labels. However, here, Aishwarya, and sorry if I don't pronounce your name very well, because it's quite tough, uh, had a question is the following. So this is a special thanks to Aishwarya. And there was a question, how can I add or how, how to show the data labels on top of a bar chart? So that's what we're going to do here because we have here right now in this video, where I covered how to add the data labels. However, if you want to add the data labels, not only here, but also on top of your bar chart specifically, you need to position them correctly. So let's start and I'll, I'll go completely from scratch. All right, the first thing what we're going to do is we need to have our chart.js settings. So I'm going to get a basic chart.js. So we go to chart.js.org and then click here on chart.js. You can see all the information here. I'm going to copy all of this, the entire chunk of code here. Copy that. And I'm going to paste it in here. And once I've pasted it in here, what I want to do is I want to give it a proper indentation here. And this is already by default a bar chart. So that's nice. I'm going to give it uh, two times a tap. There we are. All right. What I will do as well is I will have to add two JavaScript libraries. The first one is the Chart.js library and the second one will be the Chart.js plugin for data labels. So what we're going to do here is the following. We are going here to the getting started uh, part and then you click on the sub menu getting started. And in here we can see here the Chart.js uh, uh, JavaScript library. That's the one we need. Paste it in here and make sure that the JavaScript library is on above the JavaScript code below here related to Chart.js because there are some commands in here that is neat uh, that needs this JavaScript library first to be read. All right. Once we've got that, the next thing what we need to do is go on here. Sorry, on this one here, and that's the cdnjs.com library, and you just search in search here for the Chart.js plugin. And the reason why is this: if you will go in here, let's go back here. If you go in here, you will see here some of the basic uh, information getting started. It will give you some information and it, and it refers here to get this uh, Chart.js plugin data labels at number two. This is fine, but this doesn't work here. And the main reason why it doesn't work is because this is not a, uh, a Chart.js file. You can see here, this is normal file will be Chart.js.min.js or Chart.min.js for minimized version. And this is not a JavaScript file. This one is. So we need to have the JavaScript file. And so this is why we get here the latest Chart.js plugin data labels. Get the one version 2.0.0 RC. Yes, and the reason why is this version supports the Chart.js version. Here you can see here Chart.js version 3. Remember, we're going to focus on Chart.js version 3. And that's why. All right, so we've got that. We have this one here. You have the file. Make sure you get it in here. Copy this here. Once you copy that, you get the, the information here. Put it below the Chart.js library, but above the chunk of code, basically here between. Just put it here between, and it's fine. Everything else here, keep it in there. Don't touch it. That's fine. All right. So once we save this, we have here already our chart, but we don't have the data labels yet inserted. What I want to do first is to squeeze the chart to make it smaller because right now you can see it's far too big. So what we're going to do here is the following. I'm going to give here in a canvas, I'm going to give it a div and this div will be very simple, a class for the chart div, so chart box with a class of chart box. All right, and then put it in here. Once we did this, add it up in here, add this up in here. So then save that. So once we've got that, what I want to do here is I want to adjust the width here. We say here max width, or we're just going to give it a div. We say here style. And then we say here class chart box and give it a 600 pixels. All right, then we say here width, max width, oh, 600 pixels. Save that. Once we save that, refresh, there we are. So now we've got this. And now what I want to have is the, the data labels in here. I want to show the data labels in here immediately. How do we do this? Well, basically we have the everything here. We can go here now and then we can look here at the, we have the integration and the integration shows here a few basic, but if we scroll down here, what we need to have basically is here 
indicate the plugin to activate it. So basically what we'll say is we want to activate the plugin. How do we activate it? By just adding up this chunk of code just here above the options. So we're going to add up this piece of code here. We copy that, put it in here, just above the options, and that's it. So now we have activated. So we said we say in charge yes, please check specifically for this plugin, which is of course in here, which will load. All right. So now we have that. So we have our settings here, our registration. And then we have three types of configurations. And what we're going to do is we're going to do specifically for the data sets here. We do it per data set, but we also could do it basically in the options here. I would also show both options for now. Global, I tend not to use most of the time because I like to have here this level of control. All right. So basically here we have the data set. You can see here the namespace, data set, data labels. Because of this, Chart.js understands now we have a new command called data labels. So if we have here data labels, it understands a certain value here. So that's what we're going to do, but we need to put it in the options. So what we're going to do here first, because we activated this one already, we just saved this for now. Refresh, you should see here exactly the data being set. However, right now, the positioning is incorrect because this is just a default setting. And the default setting means nothing special, just here at the center. So this is basically what we call the anchor and alignment at center. So what we're going to do is we're going to reposition the anchor and we're going to reposition the alignment as well. So to do that, what we're going to do is basically here, we're going to do it on the data set first. And after we're going to work on the options, plugins, data labels, but you can see your data set, data labels. All right. So meaning if you want to adjust it or you want to control specifically on the data set, meaning this here, Yes, I'm going to show you later why this is important. Then you have the following. So we say here, my chart data, data sets. And in data sets, here we add up a new item called data labels. Data labels. And this data labels can be recognized because we have pinpoints here in the options. To, in the plugin says we want to add up a plugin here. And then it will just search for here. Read this piece of code there. And then it understands that this is a data label. All right. So in here, we're going to do the following. We can say here, just to double check if we can get the right command. We say here, color blue, that will be fine. We save this, refresh, and now you can see we get the color blue here. All right. This means that we are connected here with the data labels. So now what we want to do is we want to adjust the alignment. To adjust alignment, we go here to the options. And in here, we have alignment and anchor. These are very important aspects to understand. So I'm going to click on anchor first. You can see here how the anchor works. So the anchor by default is set on center and alignment as well. So alignment is here in the offset. So alignment is set here, default is on center. So basically the anchor is here. This is the offset and this would be then the alignment wherever you are. And the reason why I want to talk about anchor first because the anchor is the starting point, meaning where do we anchor it? Well, basically where is the default starting point? Default is set, or where is the starting point, which is the anchor. So what we want to do is we want to be here. We want to be here at the very end of anything, of a bar chart in our case. In our case, it's a bar chart. It's not a horizontal. Uh, yeah, it's not a horizontal bar chart. We'll use a vertical scale. Then we have a vertical bar chart, so we need a horizontal scale. So we set it up here at the very end. Yeah, so it will be here on top. And then after we use the alignment to control where exactly. Because that the alignment is set in the center, meaning that exactly in the anchor it will be set. So let me show you here. So we say here, the anchor, and the anchor is set now here. We will say here, end. Meaning, make sure you have a comma here above, all right, because there's a next value. Meaning here, it will go up here at the top. This is the starting point. There you are. Once we refresh, it's a starting point, but you can see still the alignment is set on center as well. So meaning that the anchor equals alignment in this case, and we don't want that. So exactly at that spot, we want to push it to the top as well above. If you look here at positioning, then you can see here, what happens if we say top? On top says the following, this is the anchor. Here's the offset, offset means some white space. And then we have the value above here. So, and that is the top. Left would mean from the, we will put it at the left side with the amount of offset or pixels moving to the left and then the label, all right? So this is basically here, and then this horizontal, this is the one we need because we have a uh, we have a vertical bar chart, meaning from top and uh, up and down. So it will work in the horizontal scale. Don't get confused here. This is horizontal scale, but the bar chart is a vertical bar chart. 
all right? So here on vertical scale, we have a horizontal bar chart, meaning left to right, all right? So this is the one we need. We run to the end, and at the end here, we will push it up here as well. So we say here the following is the top or end is exactly identical. So we can say here alignment or align, that's, that's the official namespace, top. Save that, refresh, there we are. We push it to the top, and then maybe say, well, I would like to have some more space between the anchor and the alignment, meaning the offset needs to be set. And this is why we talk about offset here, because the offset is basically the red arrow here. Offset represents the distance, as you can see here, in pixels to pull the label away from, I repeat, away from the anchor point. Yeah, so that's the space here. So let's say you want more alignment or more space between. We can do offset. By default, it's set on 4. We can do offset of 10. When we do that, you can see here our offset has become far more. Of course, pay attention here because it might conflict your item here because after a while, if you go too much up, it will destroy the design of your offset or you won't be able to see your data label. But this is basically how you can do it. With this, you can put your bar chart or the data labels on top of your bar chart. Let's put this back to the original level is four. Well, let's make it five is perfect. Refresh, there you are, five pixels between. And this is how you can do it. And this is basically the question of how to control and set the data labels on top of your bar chart. So if you enjoy this and you maybe have a question as well, put them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.